How do kingdompreneurs do business God's way? What does faith in business really look like? What strategies and mindsets are required to grow your business and fulfill your God-given purpose? Those are the questions this podcast will answer. My name is Jeff Elder, and welcome to Business God's Way. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Business God's Way. My name is Jeff Elder, and I am your host. I appreciate you listening in to today's episode. Hope all is well. Hope you are staying safe. Today, I wanted to bring up a couple topics that came up in some of my call to impact coaching program. And it's a question that comes up comes up pretty often. And it also creates a lot of stress. And I wanted to talk about this idea of focusing in on your offer. Focusing in on your offer. We have a tendency to want to overcomplicate our business. We have this mindset often that if I can just do more, then I can make more money in my business. And I understand that mindset because logically it makes sense that, well, if we're just doing more and we're providing more offers, doesn't make sense that we're going to make more money. And typically the answer to that question is no. It typically does not create more revenue for the business. In fact, there are plenty of entrepreneurs out there who have streamlined their offerings down to only about one or two. And they're making a pretty decent living. They're growing a business that they want. And I started to take notice of that because I know in my business, I was doing the same thing for so long. I was offering so many things. Why? Because Well, I was pretty good at doing the things that I was offering. So I just thought, well, if I'm good at these things anyway, why not just offer as many of these things as I can? And the problem with that was and is that it leads and it led to burnout. And I was not seeing the results that I wanted to see. And when I started to hear that you can actually grow a business by reducing the things that you offer, I listened up. I listened. I wanted to learn how does this happen? How can this happen for my business? Because I don't want to get burnt out. I also want to make an impact. And when we do so many things, it's a lot harder to have impact. And so what I've done in my own business and what I encourage my called to impact students to do is to eliminate all of the extras that they're trying to do in their business and to get down to to answer the question, what is the one thing that I can start with right now and just invest my time, my money, my energy into building this one thing first? And then down the road, as soon as that one thing gets up and one running and is profitable and is manageable, then you can think about adding a second thing or a third thing. But so often we start with wanting to start with multiple things. And that is when disaster happens. And so an exercise that I took my students through was 
First of all, I asked them the question, what do you want from your business? And what don't you want from your business? And I encourage them to make a list of 10 things on each side of those columns that what I want in business and what I don't want in business. Because when we can sit down and when we can answer those questions about our business, we can start to utilize that as a grid for which we make decisions. So for instance, if one of the I don't wants of my business is I don't want to run myself crazy by spending hours upon hours upon hours working in my business, but I don't have the freedom to have a life outside of my business. Well, then you bring that to the discussion the next time you ask yourself, hey, should I start something new? Well, you can go back to that list and remember that you wrote down, I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours in my business. So then the answer to the question, should I start something new, becomes very obvious, right? The answer is no. Because you've defined what you don't want. The same thing could happen, let's just say you put on what I do want in my business. And let's just say you put down there, I want the freedom to be able to step away from my business whenever I want to. So I can go serve or do whatever it is God's calling me to do. And I don't want to be trapped inside of my business because that does not bring freedom. That is what I want. So the same thing applies. The next time you, see, the next time the idea comes to your mind, I want to start something new. Well, you can go back to the list, and you can say, "Oh, you know what? No, this, this is. I want freedom in my business. I want time freedom in my business." And so we say no. We need to simplify, we need to streamline our businesses, and we need to eliminate the fear that because or if we do that, we're somehow going to reduce the possibility of revenue, and that is not the case. The chances are your revenue is going to increase because you become highly focused on the one thing. Here's another thing to think through when we're talking about how to streamline and how to choose the one thing. The next thing you need to ask yourself or the next thing you need to do after you've made your do want and don't want list of your business, you need to have an idea of who it is you want to work with. Who it is that you want to work with. Who is your ideal customer? Because once you can figure out who your ideal customer is, then you can figure out how you can best help them. How you can best help them. And it is out of this question of how you can best help them is where you are going to help define for yourself what the one thing is you're going to offer them. What is the one thing you can do for them to help them, to get them the results that they are looking for? What is the one thing that you can present with them, uh, present to them with clarity so that they absolutely know what you do, who you serve, and how you can help? You see, when we try to do too many things it becomes a lot harder for us to communicate what it is we do. So in my business, I have come down to Call to Impact. It is a group coaching program. 
It is my one thing right now. And in this one thing, I teach the business God's way formula. And that is what I focus on because I believe the business God's way formula is how I can best serve my clients and my call to impact students. And that framework happens inside of my call to impact coaching program. And that's it. That is my one thing that I'm going to focus on. Now, do I have a vision for adding things in the future? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely, I do. But for right now, I'm staying the course and I'm committed to invest in my time, my energy, my resources into called to impact. And can I just say something right here? What freedom has come from me making that decision? It is the most freeing thing I have done in business in all of my years of entrepreneurship. There is a freedom that comes from knowing that I don't have to do all the things. I know who I want to serve. I want to serve Christian entrepreneurs, especially coaches and course creators those who own online businesses, that is my target audience. That is who I want to serve. And how I can best serve them is through the business God's way formula. And that formula consists of the pillar of faith. We talk about faith and how faith is important to run a business for the Christian entrepreneur. Because if They don't understand that. If you don't understand that as a as a kingdom printer, then we don't understand the true power of God that we have in our business. Then I talk about the second pillar of mindset. We have to get past our mindset traps that keep us stuck. And then there's the strategy pillar. Our business needs a strategy, of course. It needs a specific strategy. A proven strategy. And then the last pillar is impact. I want to make sure that my students are living lives that have kingdom impact. And so you see how I've defined my audience and how I've answered the question, how can I best help them? And now I've committed to saying no to everything else for right now. And I'm solely focused on serving my current clients by providing just one thing. And so I want to challenge you to think through Are the things that you're doing in your business necessary? Are you doing all the things because you think that that is the right way, that that's going to produce more revenue in your business? How would you like a streamlined business? How would you like to be able to get rid of all those extras and to be able to focus in on one thing and do it well and make the kind of revenue that you want to make in your business so that you can have a kingdom impact, right? It's not just about the money, my friends. Don't don't hear me saying that it's just about the money. It's not. But when God blesses us with revenue, when we make money in our business, we can have an impact we can have a different kind of impact. It is a way to have an impact. It's not the only way, but it is a way for us to have impact. Because when we make 
money in our business. We can do different things. We can give. We can donate. We can serve. And this is why this topic is so important to me because I, I've seen so many entrepreneurs stress themselves out and burn themselves out. This is why this topic came up on the last call to impact coaching call because I noticed a lot of people w wanting to do so many different things and they were, go they were going crazy and they were burning themselves out. And so I had to slow down the process a little bit and I, need to, I needed to coach them through this idea of simplifying your business. Picking one thing. So I, again, I want to challenge you. Make a list. Ten items. What you want out of your business and ten items what you don't want out of your business. Then I want you to define who your audience is and how you can best serve them. What offer can you create that can best serve them and help them solve their problems? Uh, then I want you to pray through, God, help me to build this. Help me to eliminate the distractions. Help me to eliminate all the things that I'm doing that is preventing me from going all in on the one thing so that he can maximize the impact that you have in your clients' lives. I hope this episode was helpful. And hey, if you have not yet left a review or rating over on Apple, podcast, I would greatly appreciate you doing that. That just helps get this podcast into the, into the hands of more kingdom printers just like yourself. Thank you for listening. Have an amazing weekend. God bless you. I love you guys and I'm praying for you and continue to do business God's way.